In this video, we're going to talk about the bulk modulus and volume stress. So we are finally at that point where we can finally understand why in the last several videos we've been talking about solids in a fluids course. Now, in these last few videos, um, I started off these videos by talking about elasticity. So in the case where we had some sort of a body of liquid and we submerged an object inside of it, that object was going to get compressed the deeper it went down in this body of liquid. And that was simply because as you go further down in the liquid, the depth increases, which means the pressure increases. So the pressure being exerted on all surfaces of this object was going to cause a force. But in order to understand the bulk modulus and the relationship between this volume strain and the volume stress, which we'll talk about shortly, we had to go through how it related to solids. So we started talking about this steel rod, and if we applied some sort of a force to it, it would elongate that rod by some amount delta L, and we were able to establish a relationship between that force and the elongation through this proportionality constant K, which was our spring constant. And then we learned that this Hooke's law, which is F is equal to K times the change in length, is really appropriate for this linear region on this graph, which shows the relationship between the force and the change in length. And then we started talking about all these molecular bonds and how this force being applied on some cross-sectional area of this rod was really being distributed to each individual molecule of that material. And therefore, that force was pulling on these molecular bonds, which we kind of modeled as springs. And we found this relationship, which ultimately gave us Young's modulus. So we had this relationship between the tensile stress, F over A, and the tensile strain, which was delta L over L. And those two terms were related by this constant called Young's modulus, which applied for solids and solids only. So the simplified version of that relationship really came out to be stress is equal to Young's modulus times strain. Now in this example, or in this video, I wanna talk about bulk modulus. And it's similar to Young's modulus in the sense that it establishes a relationship with some sort of stress and some sort of strain. But in this case, we're going to be compressing the object that we're studying instead of trying to pull it apart like we did to get Young's modulus. So again, if we had some sort of body of liquid and we submerged some sort of object inside of this body of liquid. We know that the further down we go, the higher the pressure is going to be. And that pressure is going to be exerted on all sides of this object, which is gonna cause some sort of compressive force on the area. And that pressure, which we know as P, is equal to F over A, the force over the unit area. Now, in the case of Young's modulus, we use this constant Y to really determine the response of an object being pulled in one direction. So in the case of the rod, we had this rod, and then we had some sort of a force, which I all just call F, and that stretched this rod some amount that we called delta L. So in this case, we still had some sort of a force, and we still had some sort of an area, which was the cross-sectional area. However, we called this F over A tensile stress. So this F over A and this F over A are fundamentally the same thing. You have some sort of a force over an area. However, Young's modulus is for solids being stretched. So this F over A was called tensile stress because there was some sort of a force acting on this cross-sectional area and it was pulling it in one direction. However, in the case of our submerged object, this F over A, is called our volume stress. And it's simply because this F, which are, are the pressure forces, they're acting on all of the surfaces of this object. It's not just acting on one cross-sectional area like it was in this rod example. The pressure forces are acting in all directions on the object's surface. So in the case of the rod, we had this tensile stress F over A, 
and that was equal to our Young's modulus times delta L over L, where this was tensile stress and this was tensile strain. And again, Young's modulus applied to solids. Now, in this case over here, where we have an object that is fully submerged inside of some body of liquid, there's going to be pressure on all surfaces of this area. Pressure just acts in all directions. So our pressure is still equal to F over A. And this F over A, again, this is volume stress instead of tensile stress. And this is going to be equal to something times delta V over V. And this term right here is our volume strain. So you can see that the volume strain and the tensile strain are somewhat similar in that in tensile strain, we have some sort of a stretched length, where in this case, we're talking about a volume. So not a length, but a volume. And this change in volume is the object shrinking in volume, whereas this delta L is this object being elongated or stretched or made longer. However, there's something missing, our proportionality constant. So in the case of this rod, we had Y, which was Young's modulus. But this compressive scenario can apply to both solids and liquids. Why? Because both solids and liquids have volume. And so technically, you can compress volume. And that's what this delta V is. Now, the proportionality constant in this case is something we call B, which is bulk's modulus. So just as Y, Young's modulus, relates the tensile stress to the tensile strain, B, bulk's modulus, relates volume stress to volume strain. Now, there's one more small term, which is very important in this compressive scenario. And that is, this is a negative value. So why is this negative? Why is B times delta V over V negative? Well, remember, in this case, we had things that were being stretched, so made longer. So delta L was positive because it was making this rod longer. However, in this case, we have delta V, which is compressing the volume. So this value right here is negative. And that's why we need this negative sign to account for the compressive situation. Or in other words, making the volume slightly smaller. So this volume strain is technically negative because it decreases the volume. Now, in this case of the rod, just as tensile stress was linearly proportional to tensile strain, in this situation, volume stress is going to be linearly proportional to volume strain. However, this equation here on the left applies to solids and liquids. And that's because solids and liquids technically can be compressed and therefore they have a bulk modulus. Whereas Young's modulus really only applies to solids. You can't technically stretch liquids, at least not in the way that is expressed in this sort of relationship. Okay, and finally, the smaller the bulk modulus, the softer the material. So a common, common material uh, is steel, and steel has a bulk modulus of 16 times 10 to the 10th Newton per meter squared. And aluminum has a bulk modulus of 7 times 10 to the 10th uh, Newton per meter squared. So you can see that aluminum is a little bit softer than steel. And so aluminum is able to be compressed more easily than steel is. Awesome. So that is bulk's modulus and this relationship between volume stress and volume strain. So we'll do a couple examples to understand this relationship. So see you then.